All right, there's a live notification. Yeah. It just takes a few seconds. There it is. Okay, let me just mute myself. Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome. You should be able to see and hear both Justice and myself on your screen. Um, this is episode 19 of the Take Note Chat, and my guest is Justice of TabletPro.com and the YouTube channel Tablet Pro. He's going to show us nine tips for next level note taking with your Windows tablet and stylus. Uh, well, we're going to be taking your questions and comments throughout this live video, so just go ahead and type those in the chat box. Um, and if you're catching this on replay, you can drop any questions or comments below down in the description. You can also post or share about this event using the hashtag Take Note Chat. Now, before I tell you about our guest, Justice, I wanted to ask if anyone watching live has any experience using um, a tablet and stylus for note taking, and if so, what are you doing with it? What kind of successes are you having, etc.? Okay, so now let me tell you about today's guest. Um, Justice is a digital artist and half the team behind tabletpro.com. It's an app that takes your Windows tablet from just a toy for casual consumption to a portable tool for real work and creation. Uh, tablet Pro takes a lot of the things you do on your desktop, desktop computer and makes them easier to do with touchscreen devices, which makes your tablet functionality much closer to what you'd get with working with a full desktop setup. So welcome, Justice. Hi, everybody. It's nice to be here. All right. Let me see if we have any feedback. Uh, um, <laughs> Ebola Stu says, I hope you're doing well, Justice. Oh, thank you. Yes, doing better. All right, good. So I wanted to have Justice present on this topic because his expertise on the subject of using a stylus and tablet is extensive. Using a stylus with your tablet gives you uh, the benefit and experience of handwriting along with a lot of the advantages of digital. And just so we don't have to keep repeating it, everything in this video refers to using OneNote on a Windows tablet with a stylus. Uh, I felt like this topic would be a great one for this present time. The nature of how and where we work has been changing slowly over the past few decades, but this current pandemic situation has made it, uh, you know, working remotely either for the current situation or for the long term a reality for a lot of people. And I felt like being able to work in more places with less equipment was a really good thing for right now and probably far into yeah. the future as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you don't know me, I am Michelle Christensen, and we are here on my YouTube channel. I create videos on OneNote and related topics like goal setting, life management, uh, productivity, and um, passionate about online communities. I host uh, the largest OneNote group on Facebook called the OneNote Bullet Journal Group and two other groups as well. Links for both my Justice and myself will be found in the description for this, along with any links we mentioned during the video. Um, Included in those links is Tablet Pro's OneNote resource page. Yes. So let me go ahead and check the chat before we jump into our com. Oh, wow, we got lots of chat. Um, oh, Lynn is using um, using her her tablet and stylus for Photoshop on her Surface Pro Six. Um, she said, uh, I'm, um, she's hoping to use, Tracy said she's hoping to use some of these tips to translate to an Android tablet. Tracy, I do think you'll get some tips that will help translate. And Tracy Smith, she's an ed tech expert. Um, she uses her Microsoft Surface Pro and Surface Go tablet PCs with a stylus often. And her favorite way is to use them during a conference or to professional development to take notes. Um, Joe Pete says, Hi guys, I only found the pen tool yesterday. Trying the artist pad seems like a great idea. Um, Joe Pete, stick around to the end because Justice is gonna give us a thorough tour of the uh, artist pad. Um, Robert wants to know, are you, Justice, are you using a Surface? And if so, which version? I'm using a Surface Pro 7 okay. and I'm using an i7 model. All right. So, and for the most part, I like it. There's a couple of little hangups that uh, occasionally annoy me, but, <laughs> but it's a good machine. Yeah. And uh, Nicola says, I use a Surface Pro for work and take notes using a stylus and record the audio of the meetings. Oh, that's a neat idea. Um, I love OneNote and would love to know more about tips and hints. Oh, that's great. Uh, Larry uses a Galaxy Tab S6 with a stylus and OneNote and 
<laughs> Tracy Smith, our ed tech person says, I'm kind of a surface addict. <laughs> um, Me too. So Ebola Stu says, any thoughts on the confusing differences between the two versions of OneNote desktop and Windows Store? So um, we are going to get into, we'll take any regular OneNote questions um, at the end of the tips portion of this. So we'll get back to, we'll circle back to that. Um, and Samuel says he uses a Surface Pro and iPad, both with the pencil and Duet software. So, wow, we got a, we got a variety of people using styluses for a lot of different cases. That's really cool. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, one final point before we get into the content that we ha that you're here for, um, Justice does create and sell an app, but that is not why I asked him here. Um, I'm not being paid or compensated in any way, and I reached out to him purely for his expertise. I don't own a Windows tablet yet. Uh, I am kind of jonesing for one of those Surface machines, though, so <laughs> we'll see. Um, so I haven't used his app, but I have watched quite a few instructional videos on it. Um, as you'll see, everything he's going to show you can be done in a Windows um, tablet and his yeah. app just makes it easier. So we're going to run through the nine tips that justice has for us. And then we're going to uh, switch over and justice is going to give us a demo of his app. And it'll be very clear when we're moving to that section. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around for it. So let me uh, do one more check of the chat and then we'll jump into the content. Michelle, are you hearing the background sound on mine? My sprinklers just kicked in. Uh, I'm, I hear you just fine. You don't hear it? Okay, perfect. Yeah. perfect. Okay. Okay, uh, Justice, let's get into tip number one. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, can we switch to showing my screen. Share oh, screen. yeah, share your screen now. All right, here we go. And we will share. Okay, I think um, it looks good. There we go. Should be coming through on onto YouTube in a second. There we go. Okay, what's tip number one? All right, tip number one. Um, you see in my notes here, I have both handwritten and um, typed text, and those fit nicely onto these lines, which for me really organizes the space nicely. So tip number one is to use the college rule lines which is in the view tab here at the top and then rule lines. And it's this one right here, not the tiny little ones and not the giant ones. You can see what those look like. College rule lines. The reason I picked this is not only because we can get the font to match and fit, but if you're inserting a PDF document, you're not gonna want something where you've got giant um, lines, rule lines, but then tiny text in the PDF document. So this is pretty consistent. You can import something and right next to it, annotate, and it, and it makes sense. Um, yeah, that's a good tip. I like the way it just kind of, like you said, with a PDF, you can annotate right next to it. Yeah, you can annotate uh, right next to it, and, and it looks good. Yeah, exactly. I like the booking notes. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a theme you'll see throughout here. Uh, uh, so that leads us kind of right to the second tip which um, has to do with good looking notes. Yeah, so this text is a very specific font and I, I went through every single pre-installed font inside of Microsoft Windows, uh, Windows 10 specifically, to find the one and only font that actually fits. There's some that do fit mostly, so you can play around with that. I have videos on that topic, but the font you're going to want to choose is not Calibri. It is uh, Microsoft Yahe. And you want font size 18. Now, if you change that font inside of home, this is only going to be for that specific um, text box and not system wide. And you want it to be system wide every time you convert text. Well, even though the converted text doesn't use that same size. <laughs> Yeah. But nice. the point is we want Yahe and I'm it, I'm typing that in the chat box. What's the size on the Yahe? Yahe size 18. Okay. And that will line up with the college rule. Lines yeah. up. Yeah. No matter okay. how many lines down you scroll, it'll do a hundred lines and it will still fit inside the uh 
the college rule lines. Yeah, that's perfect. And I, you know, that again, if you're, if you're taking notes, you kind of want them to look like they belong on the, on the line. So I love it. And I, it's um, when we were talking and you just mentioned it, that you literally went through every single font that comes pre-installed to get to that. Every single one. Yeah. It was, it was a, a not a super fun day. <laughs> 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 okay, let me just check our chat here. Um, oh, okay. And uh, Tracy Smith wants to know if you use that as your default text for OneNote, or I guess default font for OneNote. Yes, that's what I use as my default uh, font for OneNote is Microsoft Yahoo, and it makes a it makes a huge difference. Yeah, that's a great tip, and it's a nice looking font too. It's not weird looking or overly fancy or underly fancy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, okay. So now we're talking about, we've laid out sort of a college ruled page that has both handwriting and type text on it. And that gives us the perfect time to show the next cool thing you can do with a stylus in OneNote. And that leads us to tip number three. Yeah. Now with this tip, there's something that you're going to want to keep in mind. And that is that uh, handwritten text doesn't always convert well later. It's something that's best enjoyed fresh like a steak. <laughs> so if you do it later, you've moved it around, it messes up the engine in the background, the API screws up something or another. So we're going to do some fresh text here. And uh, we'll write, um, how are you? Pretty standard phrase. Now I'm gonna select it right here. And you see right here, the um, key presses that I'm pressing are in this black box here. This is key press OSD. And that's going to kind of show what that, that corresponding uh, thing is here. So right here, lasso select. Okay. Then ink to text over here. We're gonna click. And you can see it's converted it incorrectly, but it's converted it into, uh, let's write you again. Yeah, can you change your ink color? It's a little dark against a dark background. Sure. Let okay. me do white. How there we go. That's better. Are you and I can actually just make that. And notice it turned it black. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to convert this color here. There we go. And there's an easy way to do that. We can talk about that. Yeah. Oh, that's actually next, isn't it? Well, I just wanted to make sure in case people missed it. Um, so tip number three is that you can do ink to text with a simple, you know, Justice demonstrated the um, how you do that. So you can take your handwriting and convert it to text. Yeah. And as we saw, it doesn't always convert 100%, but it gets it pretty close. And then you're just, you know, need to edit it a little bit, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And, and when I did that, um, so I use the lasso button up here underneath the insert tab. I selected that. You can actually select that with the barrel button. That's the side button on the surface pen or the top mm -hmm. side button, top side button on a two button pen. Um, and you just press that and circle around the text and that allows you to, to make those adjustments. Gotcha. Okay. So tip number three was ink to text. All yeah. right. So, um, that brings us to tip number four. So we've talked about, we want this perfect, um, the Yahe font, and that we, we can convert our text, but what, you know, the text might come out not properly formatted. So what do you do then? All right, so if you have text, and let's say we have this one right here, let's go ahead and do this one more time. Um, let's see, all right, I am fine. This is the majority of my conversations in life. <laughs> and we'll convert this. And that did not do a great job. So let's try it one more time. Go, I am fine. Select it, and we're going to convert it to text. <laughs> and it converted to in, it's black text. That's why we can't see it, right? Right. So we're just okay. going to leave this. We're just going to leave this uh, as it is. Uh, you should be able to see it slightly at yeah. this. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna co copy the font style, which that keyboard shortcut is Control Sit Shift C. Now we're gonna paste that font style uh, right down here. It's working brilliant, brilliantly. 
All right, so let's go Control Shift B, and there we go. Okay, so you had that first box had the font had the formatting you wanted, and then you just copied the formatting into the new text. So yeah. okay, so yeah. uh, we can see. So tip number four is copying the text formatting from one place to another, um, and that kind yeah. of flows into what we've been talking about. That if you're taking notes and you have one section that's already nicely formatted. You convert your ink to text, and then you want to have the same formatting. So you can just copy that formatting rather than redoing it. So tip number four is copy your text format or copy font style, I guess it's called. Right. Yeah. And for clarity, that's control that's control shift C to copy the font format or style, and control shift V to paste that onto uh, another block of text. Oh, the, okay. Oh, that's really good. I, I could see that being really useful just to be able to do that with the keyboard shortcuts. Wow. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So for tip number five, so we talked about ink to text and OneNote has a, another ink to feature. Yeah. So the next ink to feature is ink to shape. So uh, this is cool. You can see I'm drawing these shapes. Um, can you see these shapes? Okay. Yes. Let's try red. Okay, and these shapes, like if I want to make a big, thick shape, I can use a thicker font size or a thicker pen size. And and that will work well. And it does quite a few shapes, not just squares, triangles, and um, rectangles. And another really cool feature, which I just discovered last week and have never posted on this, this little button right here, draw with mouse or touch. We're going to turn that on. And I'm going to draw with um, four fingers at the same time. Oh, wow. You oh, guys that's so cool. Draw. Now I can select those individually and move them around and resize them. But how cool is that? That is really cool. Uh, inside of shapes, you can also choose arrows. So I can do shapes and arrows from one to the next in different colors. And I think that is really useful and super cool. Yeah, and um, you're still using um, finger touch, right? Yeah, you can do either one, pen mm -hmm. or touch here. So this yeah. one, if I wanted to change the color of that box. All I do is just select it with lasso select. Make sure that you go all the way around the entire thing, but you can uh, really quickly make some cool things. And again, it maintains that, like you can see, this is a smaller sized line. Mm -hmm. So if I want that to be thicker, Lasso select it and tap that. Probably need to go back and forth. There we go. And you can see I've got this this nice ish looking diagram halfway done in a matter of, of a minute as opposed to uh, quite a bit more time. I've done yeah. That. Isn't that cool? That, that yeah, <laughs> doing the four shapes at once is really cool. And That's you know, cool. the um so what we're what we're talking about here is called ink to shape and Mm -hmm. early on um, and both early on when justice was using the stylus and when he showed us the four at a time, he was using, you know, a uh, touch screen ink to shape just takes what you're drawing and makes it into a perfect shape. So you can draw like a really sloppy circle or triangle or square or whatever. And the ink to shape will give you a nice clean geometric shape. Um, yeah. So that's the, I think the really neat feature with the ink to shape. Yeah. Um, Oh, uh, Barath says, uh, love your work. Tablet Pro has made my life easier. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah mine too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fan. <laughs> I okay. appreciate yeah. you sharing that. Yeah. So um, you you kind of already shared this, but tip number six was, was uh, change the ink color after the fact. Okay. So with handwritten parts, you know, like this pencil, and I always use pencil. I don't like the pen, like here if we choose the pen and we go in here. Um, I don't like the way it looks. To me, it just feels cold and mechanical, not my thing. So I always use the pencils versus the pens. Um, but if you wanna change um, something that's already like this font color, you need to select the box, which is these uh, four little dots at the top, select the box, go to uh, home and choose your font color over here to change that. You can't do it. You cannot do that um, just the way that we did with the colored pencils. However, if this is a font that we handwrite, we can handwrite 
change the color of the handwriting by selecting it. Um, why don't I demonstrate that real quickly? So we'll go, um, hello, select it, change it to blue, mm -hmm. and then converting to text does not work well. Just mm. oh, <laughs> record. Yeah, it actually, you know, it's a close, it, it was close. close. It just didn't, it just yeah. missed that list. There you go, 11 yeah. degrees. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. <laughs> Mind converting after notice that it did perfectly before we converted it. Uh, so then here, this would be a great time to. Uh, oop, I'm doing the wrong keyboard shortcut there. Control Shift V, and copy that formatting that we had from before. Mm -hmm. Which is again part of the reason why this is really important. So we have this selected. Let's say we want it to be blue like this over here. We select this. Control Shift C. So difficult for me to say. And then let's select the box again and do control shift V. And you can see we we very quickly copied that size. I don't know if it does the font, but it definitely does. I assume it would do the font. It looks like it. Well, I mean, like if we were doing instead of Yahe, we did um, Calibri or Arial or something mm -hmm. like that, if it would copy that font, I bet it would. Um, okay, so just so we're clear, um... Tip number six was to that we can change the ink color after the fact by selecting it. And we, you showed that with the handwriting that you can, you, you first wrote, wrote the word hello in white and then you changed it to blue. And sort of the, you know, the, 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 the thing that people might not see until they play around with it is that converting ink to text doesn't work as well if you change the color of your ink first. Is that correct? Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you kind of jumped the gun. Um, we have because tip number seven is all about pen, that you like you have a very specific uh, preference for pencil and not pen. So you sort of reference this. You said you don't like the pen because it feels kind of cold and stuff. So um, yeah, and you were talking about how, and maybe you can show this. Um, you had you had shown me how, like with a pencil, you can if you press hard, you get a thicker line. Versus a thin line in the pen, it's just one right. width. Yeah, I'm going to step back and then go right into that. Um, if you're trying to get, like, I'm trying to move this box to fit inside these lines, mm -hmm. and you notice it's not snapping correctly. Um, if you press the Alt button while you're moving it, it'll smoothly move so that you can position pictures and uh, text boxes and everything exactly where you want. Okay, so pencil, not pen pressure. So the Microsoft Surface Pen has um, a, a pressure curve. That means like how heavy you draw on the screen. That uh, is not really great for pencil-like lines, uh, not out of the box anyway. So um, what that means, I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. So here we're going to click on the Surface app. Um, if that's not something you have on your machine, you can look for it in the Windows Store. So I have mine set to five right now. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to put all the way up to twelve so we can see what that difference looks like. And are you in a pencil or a pen right now? So um, you can choose up here. Um, mm -hmm. Right here, this is ballpoint pen. Okay. Right here, pencil, and this will erase what's already there. So ballpoint pen. Click over to pencil. This pencil's thinner, but it's the same thickness, same um, lightness or or um, firmness here as uh, as the ballpoint pen is just a smaller line, and that's because we have the set to heavy. Mm -hmm. Over to light, I'll show the opposite side. I can press and start pressing really hard, and we can start to see that gradual incline in a really opacity. So I'm going to put this up at five so you can see what I prefer. So here I can draw light. Can, can you change to like a white or a yellow ink? I just let think it would be a little it, more. Yeah, let me do this inside of OneNote. Okay. So it's easier to see. So yeah, here, that's better. Yeah, light, medium, heavy, full pressure. Oh, and you're just doing that with your hand. That's just your hand pressure on the stylus. Yeah, that's just okay. how hard I'm pushing the stylus on the screen. So if you want, if you want to draw something that has these little subtle characteristics in it, like a fancy font that has 
uh, little embellishments and stuff like that. You can actually do that really nicely when you have the pressure set correctly. Mm -hmm. And one nice benefit if you're using um, a decent stylus is that you can go from the stylus pointing straight up and down to sideways and more sideways. And you can get this nice, soft, uh, tilted line or shading line um, that you can't do with um, a junk stylus. So tilt is something that's, that's built into OneNote and pretty fun, actually, especially if you're creating a, a shape that you're making. Um, yeah, that is really neat, especially like just the way you showed it where you went from light to medium to very heavy because um, it really looks exact. Oh, that's cool looking. Um, it reminds me of using like a colored pencil to draw, like you yeah. can use the point or you can use the side. I mean, and I didn't realize the style, you know, the, um, a stylus could do that. Like that is really very cool. Yeah. When you know what you're doing, you can do it really quickly. You can make some cool little diagrams and stuff like that. Inside mm -hmm. one. And you, so, so the tip on this one, um, which is tip number seven is that, you know, you prefer pencil, not pen because it's more pressure sensitive and it responds to the tilt. And then you um, had said you like pressure level three, I think for sensitivity. Right. So I'm using a different stylus. Um, I'm using the Raphael R520 because it's a two button stylus, which means that I can erase just by pressing the side button and dragging over what I just wrote. I don't have mm -hmm. to, and I don't have to flip the pen around to do it. Saves me time. I think it's nice. Um, and the stylus is like 40 bucks as opposed to a hundred. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little more later, but so he's not yeah. using a surface stylus. He's using no, a two-button stylus. The stylus has a different pressure curve. And what that mm -hmm. means is that it responds differently when you press on the screen. This one is easier to press lightly mm -hmm. and get a light stroke and press hard and get a, um, uh, heavier stroke. With the surface pen, I would adjust it to three because it works better specifically for that that style. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. really stylus independent or dependent. One of the two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I guess I guess the takeaway would be, you know, this idea that the the pencil is can get you these thick or thin lines depending on pressure, and it responds to tilt, and that depending on the stylus and how each individual writes, they should play around with the pressure settings, that there is a pressure setting to play around with to get. Right. The yeah. 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 Most people don't, don't know that. And this makes it more personal, more personal machine. Uh, I, I always prefer mm -hmm. not, maybe not too personal, like stay out of my business, <laughs> <laughs> but you get the idea. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, so, yeah, I think that that was a really neat thing because I, you know, I don't know that a lot of people would have found that, that there is this idea that you can sort of tell the stylist how responsive to pressure you want it to be. And that can really vary from person to person. So that's a really neat yeah. feature. Um, okay. So this next tip, which is tip, tip number eight, has to do with blank spaces. And I've seen this and sort of used it, but I find it a little bit hard to use. So tell us about inserting and removing blank spaces. Okay, so inserting and remo removing blank spaces is this little button up here next to the eraser. By the way, the eraser has extra settings. You can choose to erase whatever you want or stroke eraser, which is everything that you created in one movement. Um, next to that, sorry, just throwing that in because, yeah. All right, insert and remove extra space. This button right here, you can put it anywhere on the screen. And let's say you made your notes too close together. This is going to move everything down everything down underneath you um, as far as you drag it if you want to press it again and you can drag up make sure that I'm saying that it actually does it um, you can drag up but it seems to only drag up as far as you have it um, scaled on the screen it's you'll figure it out it's not too complicated yeah but you know it's nice that you can because uh, if you're taking notes you can just and insert more space if you need it, which is great. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Kurt Soser is here. Um, he is a one note, uh, you know, I don't even know what to call him. He's a, a really amazing one note user um, and has the website OneNote-Masterclass, which I'm now in. 
Oh, cool. Ah, Tracy Smith. Uh, sh so she's our ed tech expert. She says, I just tried it. Never knew that was there. I'm assuming she's talking about the pressure sensitive. So that's really cool because uh, Tracy knows a lot. So that is really cool that she learned there's, something. There's a lot. There's a lot inside of yeah. OneNote. It's such a cool program. Yes. Okay, so tip, that was tip number eight, which is to insert a blank space or, um, or remove it. And then finally, this last tip um, is has to, you know, it kind of ties into what you were saying that you like nice looking and more personal notes. So uh, it's not right. specific to a stylist, but go ahead and show us. <laughs> Michelle and I had lots of conversation about this. <laughs> I, had, I had to uh, lobby pretty strongly to get this in, included. Um, and I I, I'll show you why I think it's really cool. So we're gonna go into the insert tab and we're gonna go to pictures and then from online. Okay, so over here, we're going to search for doggies, oh, dog. And then we're gonna add one extra thing. So we're gonna add the word transparent. And this is the key to success. Uh, so all we have to do, let's find a cute little doggy. Oh, look at this doggy, he's so cute. And look at this one. Oh, he's so cute. All right, so we're gonna put him in this box and then let's close that and let's insert another one. And so all you do, you just go right here and you just tap on it and it's gonna insert an image here that you can scale and place in here. And what I like is that this looks really professional as opposed to using multiple different backgrounds if you want to make this dog sit on top of uh, this line here let's do this again i'm using my finger and should be using the stylus nope i should be using my finger okay we're going to use alt to get him to sit exactly where we want all right there we go now he looks like he's sitting on the box <laughs> I like. Um, yeah, that. and you know, you if when you uh, put when you hover over the dog stickers, you can see that if it had a background, like it, it just wouldn't look as as nice. It would look like you know a, a block rather than just yeah. the outline of the right. dog. How great um, does that look? Amazing. It looks yeah, super cute. And you know, <laughs> and uh, I'm a total dog person, so that's why he's using dogs. Um, Not because and, I hate dogs, everybody. Right. For the record. <laughs> um, but if you are taking notes, if you were taking notes like in a class or something, you might want just one of these nice little images and it just makes it more ni nice to read back later if you have to study or whatever, or if there's an image that would demonstrate the thought you're thinking, it's just one more option for, oh, that's cool. I love it. Yeah. Like depending on your class. Yes. Yeah. It matters. So, um, Oh, that see now that's really cool. And how simple was that? That was yeah. great. Uh, so Kurt would like to say thank you to Justice because he pointed me to the um, what what what's it called the Renaissance or Rensselaer or whatever stylus, and he ordered oh, yeah. uh, he ordered two of them. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, I I did a lot of research on it. I I did probably fifteen different styluses that I tested from Amazon in different places and and found one that I really liked. And so I, I have it on my website now. So lots yeah. of time and thought it was a, it was worth supporting. Yeah. And it's and good, right Kurt? Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that in just a second. So that was our, our tip number nine, which was to insert a transparent image onto your notes. And the, as you said, the key was to look for a transparent image. So you get these really nice pre-cropped images. Yeah. Um, so that, we're about to wrap up the tips section. And um, so if you have any final questions for justice, um, type them in the chat now. And while people are typing those final comments, let's um, go back and specifically mention the stylus that you like. Okay, yeah, sure. So the stylus um, is, uh, I, I'll pull up the, the page. I've actually been working on, uh, let's do a new page. Been working on the website to make it nice. And let's go uh, stylus, tabletpro.com slash stylus. So 
So here's the stylus right here. You can choose the colors. There's actually two new covers, uh, colors that are coming out, um, two blue ones, which I'm more excited about than I wish I was, like <laughs> embarrassingly so. So here's the stylus. This is what it looks like. This is what it looks like compared to the Surface Pen. And uh, I talk about on the website why specifically I prefer one over the other. Um, for note taking, having the eraser button uh, on the side is very, very significant to me. Uh, it means that a lot of different things that I am trying to do, uh, I can do much, much faster. And that's not, it's not a sales ploy. You have double the resources and you can do things much quicker. And it's a lot cheaper than the Surface Pen, which for me is, is again, very important. Yeah. And so just to be clear, the Surface Pen has one button. So if you wanted to erase, you either have to flip it over like you would with a traditional yellow pencil, or you have to go up to the top and select eraser. And you're saying on right. the, it's called the Raphael 520? Yeah, I, I okay. call it the R520 just because it's shorter and Raphael is a little harder to right. pronounce. Um, yeah. and, and on the Raphael, you have this second button that can function as an eraser. So right while your hand is on your page, you can just click that second button, erase and keep going. That, yeah. That's what makes it easy. Okay, gotcha. Right, and it doesn't have Bluetooth, which is why the price is, is cheaper. Mm -hmm. So if you don't need that Bluetooth button for something, then this is a really good alternative. It's a little lighter than the Surface Pen. Uh, the lines are a little cleaner. You can see the lines are demonstrated right here. A little smoother, um, pretty similar, but a little bit better in my opinion. And mm -hmm. it's easier to draw, easier to draw those faint pencil-like lines than it is with the, uh, with the Surface Pen. Yeah. Okay. So we have a couple comments. Um, Kurt says they are really amazing and we're thinking about introducing them to our one-on-one -on -one students program. So that's really cool. That's a, you know, oh, yeah, that's really cool. Um, and I think because you were, you were really excited about the stylus, Joe Pete says you need to get out more <laughs> smiley. <laughs> I do. I go like to three places in the world right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, Larry wants to know the R520 only works with Surface Pros. It works with anything that the Surface Pen works with. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, if you have um, like a um, HP X360, uh, I think I'm saying that right. <laughs> that if it uses the Surface Pen, if the Surface Pen will work on it, then the R520 uses the exact same protocols. And it's a Microsoft certified stylus. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, it has tilt and all the same settings as the Surface Pen minus Bluetooth. Okay. And just for people that don't know, um, what, like, what does Bluetooth do on a stylus? Like, what would they be giving up by not having Bluetooth? So Bluetooth allows you to, to click the button uh, on the eraser um, from a farther away distance. So like if you were doing PowerPoint uh, presentations and you wanted to advance a slide from halfway across the room, you're going to want a Bluetooth button or a separate Bluetooth clicker. The uh, caveat, obviously, is that technology, the uh, inclusion of that technology costs more money. Mm -hmm. And people like me who I don't do PowerPoint presentations, I don't, I don't really care. Like, I just want it to draw nicely. Um, I want it to stick to the side of the surface. This one does. That was one of the, actually the biggest selling points for me initially. So I didn't want to have to put it in my pocket or use a pen clip. I think yeah. that's annoying, deprecated ideas. <laughs> and, you know, you just made the click sound. So let's just listen for that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So right. that click is the strong magnet. Yeah. It's yeah. slightly stronger than the surface ah. pen uh, magnets. And both of them are fine. I, I, yeah. I don't have any complaint about the surface pen. It's fine. It's just yeah. more expensive. And Kurt says the, um, I get, I'm assuming he's referring to the R520. It has USB charging. Yeah. It has micro USB and the battery life is like, um, it's a couple months typically. And it's really good. It's not like, wow. this, not like the Apple Pencil where you might have it for a couple of days and then you have to charge it again. Like I almost never have to charge. And then when you do like an hour, we'll provide you with uh, almost a hundred hours of use. Wow. It's a lot. That is, that's amazing. Uh, so we just, uh, Kent just popped in and said, um, what tablet does Justice recommend for Windows 10? Uh, okay, so there's a couple different things. Um, if you're an artist, uh, the Surface Pro 7 is not my top choice. There's a couple different problems with the pressure curve. You know, I can show it real quickly. It won't take more than a second or so. Okay. A couple of seconds. All right, so here, we'll click here on the pen icon. 
doesn't want to show it. Okay, and clicking on advanced, you can see the pressure curve. So if I'm drawing here, you can see this ramps up. And can you change your ink color? That blue is a little hard to see. Uh, yes, how do I do that? White. There we go, perfect. Well, I forgot I could do that. All right, so over here, let me use the mouse so you can see it. Over here, we have this ramp. This mm -hmm. is light pressure down here at the bottom and full pressure over here on the right. So I'm just gonna put my pen tip on the screen and press, press just a little bit harder, 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 all the way to get to the top. That's mm -hmm. what you wanna see. Now, if I put my palm on the screen and do the same thing. <gasps> nope, it's still there. <laughs> yeah. I thought they had fixed it. Um, so what are you trying to show? So you started by saying if you're an artist then, and, okay. and what is it that you're trying to show us? Okay, so over here, this is a very good question. No one has a clue. Over here, these little steps, these uh -huh. steps, uh, it's called staircasing. Mm -hmm. What that means is that when you're in a drawing program, uh, let's say one note, you're not going to see it in one note. So this is really not uh, terribly important for note takers. If you're drawing a line and you're mm -hmm. going from thin to thick, what's going to happen is it's going to jump in pressure, which means you're going to get almost a bug leg. This is too little. Let's make this bigger. You know, almost a bug leg type ramping in the pressure curve. I could have easily demonstrated this properly in this amount of time. So it's going to look like this as opposed to a smooth ramp in that line. That's a terrible demonstration. Basically, for, for artists, you're going to get a cleaner pressure sensitive line on a Surface Pro 6 versus a 7. Oh. A, um, Surface Book 3 works correctly. Um, my, my, my top choice right now, and this may change in a month, is the Surface Pro 6 um, is my favorite. I like the i5 model. If you're doing like two dimensional art, that's my top choice. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you know, you are a digital artist. So you're coming at this from the perspective of an artist. So we, I just wanted to kind of put that out there that you're coming at it from the perspective of an artist and being able to draw these, you know, very specific lines and stuff. Very specific, very, very specific. And some okay. programs you're not going to see it at all. So it depends gotcha. on which program you're using. Yeah. Um, so Joe Pete says, I use the Surface Pro. Pro 4 with a Surface Pen and would like to set the artist pad with four highlighter colors. How do I create buttons and position them in Pen Tool? So, you know what, Joe Pete, we're gonna go into a demo of the artist pad. That's part of Justice's app. Um, and that'll be after this section. So yeah. Tracy Smith says, I would love to hear your Justice's thoughts on the Surface Pro X as I'm considering getting one. And before you answer that, Kurt says, I never thought about staircasing. It's a very good point. So yeah, that, that was a good find. And you could really see that, how it didn't smoothly yeah. get thicker. So let's talk about Surface Pro X. Do you have any thoughts? Do you know about it? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I did a lot of testing on it. Um, so real quickly, the staircasing thing was just recently fixed, like a week or two ago on the Surface Pro X, which is why I'm saying I think that there's a chance they may be able to fix it on the Surface Pro 7 and are working on it. I've actually been working directly with Microsoft on this for like nine or 10 months. Mm. We're, we're really close to fixing a handful of different important things for artists, which I'm excited for. Um, the other question was what? Oh, uh, Surface Pro X. And I. Th oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're taking notes, it's fantastic. Uh, the artist pad we made compatible. Uh, the pen tool we do not have compatible yet with the Surface Pro X. We may or may not uh, add that in there. However, you still have a great amount of, of flexibility. If you're trying to do 3D work, Surface Pro X is totally, absolutely out. If you're trying to do 2D, 2D digital art, so you're painting or you're drawing or you're sketching, uh, it's a very capable machine in most of the programs. I initially thought that maybe a third would work, and about 80% actually have versions that work really well or have a 32-bit version of their program that runs almost flawlessly on, on the Sur Surface Pro X. Now, going forwards, that may not be supported as much, 
but for a year or two worth of, of whatever you're wanting to do, as long as it's not video work or 3D work, you're probably going to be okay. But definitely check those programs first. I have a video on YouTube about this, all the programs, all the drawing programs that are compatible. So I highly recommend checking that out. Oh, that's cool. Now, uh, I, I happen to know Tracy. She was a guest on the show. Um, so she's in ed tech, so primarily working with students and teachers to use technology and education. So I would imagine for her case, oh, here we go. Tracy is saying, I'd be using it for note taking, writing, course design, and such. I'm so not artistic. <laughs> yeah, so I would just, just confirm. So what you would want to do is you'd want to look for a um, 32 bit version on the um, the program website mm -hmm. of the, the program that you want to make sure works on it. Uh, OneNote works on it. The Tablet Pro Artist Pad works on it. Um, the other ones, just check, make sure they have a 32-bit version. If they have a 32-bit version, almost every single time it's going to work and work pretty nicely. Very little difference uh, for this type of work in 32 versus 64-bit programs. Great, great tip. Let me. Um, oh, and then Kurt says back to the R520. It also works with tilting in OneNote, and and that he can't do this with his SP stylus. Stylus. So yeah, it yeah, has great. all all of the basics, which was one of the um, conditions I had when when um, testing other stylus. Yeah. It had to have tilt. It had to have four thousand ninety six levels of pressure sensitivity. It had to do a couple different things well. Yeah. Um, okay, and then I think I think Barash is it Baroth. I'm sorry, and I'm sorry I'm, if I'm saying your name wrong. Is um, asking about. I'm um, I'm pretty sure this pertains to your app. Will the pen tool fix be coming anytime soon? We have it working as uh, of today. Ah, and okay. Yeah, I was so excited. I was so excited. It's been, awesome. it's been the same time Surface Pro Seven came out. I bought it the first week, and my own software didn't work on it, and I've been pulling my hair. Yeah. Um, notice very thin <laughs> it all out. Yeah. Um, and we just got it working and we have some really cool new powerful features coming to the pen tool and it will work better than it did before because microsoft built us an api or a dll file so yeah i'm, I'm super stoked that's that's very cool. Um, so we've been talking about your app and stuff. So everything you've shown so far was just, you know, general tips on note taking, making your notes look good mm -hmm. in OneNote and that kind of thing. And I think, oh, you know, we had one, we had a, a single like general OneNote question, and then we're going to transition into you a demo of your app. So I want to cycle back to that um, one single one note question which had to do with the confusing versions so yeah. i think i have a pretty concise answer for this um <laughs> i'm just scrolling back so and this is from ebola stew early on um so if you're on any device except a windows 10 desktop you only have one choice you know, so if you're on an iPad, you have one choice. If you're on an Android, right. you have one choice. If you're on a OneNote Windows, I'm sorry, if you're on a desktop Windows 10 PC, you have two choices. You have the newer version of OneNote, which is called OneNote for Windows 10, and you have the older version, which is called OneNote 2016. Um, the older version, OneNote 2016, will be supported for at least three more years, and then I think there's limited support for two more years after that. Um, and then the newer version is the version that uh, Microsoft has committed to going forward. They're going to be developing and adding features to. Some people like the older version, OneNote 2016, because it has features that haven't been added anyplace else yet. Mm -hmm. The easiest way to tell the difference is OneNote 2016 has the page names across the top and they look like tabs. OneNote for Windows 10 has the page names listed down the side and it looks similar to versions on all of the other um, devices that you can use. And if you're on a Windows 10 machine, you can install and use both until OneNote 2016 goes away. And like primarily I use OneNote for Windows 10 and then every once in a while I'll open up OneNote 2016 for a specific feature and then go back to the Windows 10 version. So I hope that answers your question. And um, I do have a video I can post to, I can post a link to it in the comments on the versions as of February. So. I hope that answers that question. And we got some. Uh, 
Um, oh, and Baroth says, it's a very nice look. I think he's referring to your app. He or she is referring to your app. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so that takes care of the content portion of the show. We've gotten all of our nine tips. You've told us your stylist recommendation. We have a link to um, that stylus. And I did want to include that in today's show because I personally didn't know that Windows tablets would accept a third-party stylus or a stylus that wasn't sold with the tablet. So it's good to know that there's a choice. And you had mentioned you tried like 15. So that's uh, really good to know your choice. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to link to that stylus here in my video because I haven't actually used it, but there's a link to the stylus that's on, ju it's on Justice's site and that's in the description. Right. Yeah. yeah. And um, also links to connect with you online are in the description of this video. Um, I have your site and your YouTube channel. That's probably the best way, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, can I share here? I've been working on this all week, actually a couple of weeks in preparation of the OneNote resource page. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We were gonna. Why did we'll we mention it? Yeah. To um, the uh, this live stream will be added to this page as well, so you guys can access this on this site. So here, there's a list of different um, videos, and those videos are um, written here. You can see that the content is is um, time stamped. So if you want to know what's in this video and then at what time in the video, you can go through here, click on those. Those will link through, although to open it in YouTube. So it's easier probably just to play it here. Mm -hmm. But you can go through uh, this site and there's a bunch of different videos on a bunch of YouTube or uh, OneNote content here. And I believe, Michelle, you're going to be adding to this, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, I'm working on something to I'm, add into there. Yeah, so that'll I'm be really cool. Um, so and I put the... I put the link to that. That's in the show description. And I just put it in the chat, um, tabletpro.com slash OneNote. So that's a OneNote resource page. Yes. Yeah. Um, and Bill, you can see uh, the replay will be ready as soon as we, we're done streaming. And it'll be at the same link you're watching it. Yeah. Um, okay. So that kind of wraps up the OneNote sort of demo content portion of the show. Mm -hmm. The remainder of the show, we are gonna do a demo of Justice's app. So if you wanna stick around for that, that would be awesome. I'm really excited about it because I've um, been checking it out and I think it's really cool. Um, but if you are not interested in, you know, this app that will improve the functionality of a Windows tablet and stylus, then we will see you next time around. So uh, take it away, Justice, show us your app. <laughs> All right. Uh, for anyone who's heading out, thank you again. Uh, we're both very happy that you were here. Uh, okay. So uh, do we want to do the question on how to get the location uh, first, or do we want to do that after? Uh, location. How to set this up. There was a question on that, uh, which I thought was a really good question. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. What, do you, what question are you talking about? Uh, let me address it quickly. It'll take okay. just a quick minute. All right. So uh, what I'm doing is I have the pen tool running in the background, mm -hmm. which is a little pen icon, and that's available in the Windows Store. Um, just search pen tool or Tablet Pro pen tool. It has a shortcut built into it that, that captures the location of the mouse pointer. So I'm going to put my cursor, my pointer, I'm using a trackpad. I'm going to put it over the red pencil. I'm going to mm -hmm. hit Alt-X, and it's going to copy the coordinates. Now, if I want one of these buttons to click that those coordinates, then I can go over here to edit layout. Um, I have basic instructions uh, like setup guides, install guides, and everything that will walk you through this portion. Okay, so, so we're, we're in, specifically you're answering a question that has to do with the app right now. Yeah, there it was. Okay, all right, it gotcha. Earlier, it was asked. Okay. So we're going to tap on a button, and then all you're going to do is you're just going to paste those coordinates right here into this location. And then when you are back here, when you press that button, it's going to click that spot on the screen. That's the easiest, fastest way to do it. Um, a little pro tip here is keep this minimized. Um, so it's not here. So then you can just go Alt X, paste, Alt X, paste, Alt X, paste. And you're not actually clicking on this. You're not switching back and forth between windows. And that's the fastest way to uh, add those in here and just location click. And so um, we're in your app now, and what you just showed us was um, 
the fast way to, so your app, and we're, we're going to, you know, that was just a specific question. So I just want to wrap right. that up and then we'll kind of go into it, you know, a, you know, a full demo, but uh, you were talking about how to map one of these buttons to a specific pen or something. Right. So okay. these, these pens in OneNote 2016, you can use keyboard shortcuts mm -hmm. to select pens and pencils. Although I don't think there's a pencil in, in 2016, but you can switch between different colors and different things with keyboard shortcuts. You cannot do that inside of um, OneNote, the Windows Store or UWP version. It's not a feature. So what this does is it effectively gives you, it effectively gives you a touch shortcut for the same thing. So I'm clicking up here with these buttons down here, clicking these buttons um, by sending a lo location press to those spots. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. All so, right. So now let's let's back way up. Pretend you know we've never we don't know anything about it. Take us through Tablet Pro. All right. So here I'm going to turn this off. Uh, this is OneNote. Mm -hmm. uh, you're welcome for everyone who didn't know that. <laughs> 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 and normally you're, you're switching between things like this. This is pretty self-explanatory. You already got this. Now, if I um, open up Tablet Pro, which uh, the install links and everything are there, then if I want to do anything faster, I can do it faster. So if I'm taking notes, one of the big problems I have is if I'm taking notes, it's just too hard to make it pretty while keeping up with whoever's teaching or talking. So I could do on a normal note taking as I would I would be writing and I might write bigger and I might draw a line. But as far as like doing anything fancy, they're just it's just too hard to do it quickly. So with these tools, you can switch between colors and highlighters and um, these things, uh, like if you wanted to select something and delete it, there's not a way to do that easily without going into submenus inside of OneNote. So this does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So you can do the stuff that's um, actually requiring your brain. Instead of navigating, you're using it to write stuff down. And I like that. <laughs> that's one of my favorite things about note taking. Yeah. And, you know, I like that it, if I'm understanding correctly, like if you have, um, like let's say you're taking notes in a class and there's three colors you always use. You could just put those three colors right on the pad that you have displayed at the left there. And then um, you, instead of having to go up to the top and constantly be reselecting a pen, you're just, you know, over there, click green, over there, click yellow, over there. Yeah. Right. You don't, you don't want to use your right hand to do all of the work when it could be done by two hands. So you're splitting the load, you're cutting the time in half to do those things. And, um, I don't know. It's just, it's funner. Like I, I feel like anything that you have to do where you feel like you're trudging through mud, it's, it's never as fun as it could be mm -hmm. and doing it this way. Like I, I take notes because I enjoy it more than that. I necessarily want to remember, <laughs> which is a little weird, um, <laughs> but, but I mean, this is something I, I like. So yeah. Yeah, so this allows you to do a number of different things. Um, we have a new update that came out that allows you to stack buttons, which means things like selecting a line. Mm -hmm. or, um, I added something in here. I think I need to remove this guy. Yeah, there we go. So if, if you're wanting to um, do all these different things. You can stack buttons. So that means you can go through a couple different things like a menu, which is not something that we used to be able to do. So I could go, I could have a button that, that, that presses all of these and goes back and forth. Um, but the basic, the basic thing that you want to know is that you can speed up what you're doing with custom controls on the side. That's, that's number one. Yeah. Okay. So these, these um, buttons we're seeing on the left, those are the buttons that Tablet Pro gives you and you can uh, program those to do things that you, yes. Yeah. You can program those to do things that you do frequently. Is that, is that kind of the general gist? Correct. Okay. And you mentioned something too, and which I don't think I realized. So like I was talking about taking notes in three colors. And when I said that, I was thinking that, oh, okay, I'm writing in yellow. Let me go click the blue pen. Now I'm going to write in blue. Now I'm going to go click the red pen. And it, 
but you're saying that I could just use my left hand to change my pen color without ever taking my right hand off my, my writing hand off the page. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I think about one, probably the easiest way. And I think probably everyone is smart enough to understand it, but I think about a mechanic being underneath the car. Mm -hmm. It's like I need a wrench. I need this. I need that. And if he had to slide out from underneath that car every time to get a different tool, we can understand how that would take a massive amount more time. Mm -hmm. And this is a smaller space. Obviously we're working on it on a canvas is 12 inches. Um, and it's just not, it's not giant, but we underestimate how much that actually affects our ability to get work done. So I'm an efficiency nut and love making things as <laughs> easy and fast as possible. And, and so this makes it's a game changer for me. Yeah. And, and those buttons are pretty customizable, right? It's like, not just that you can change your pen color. Like you can have them do all sorts of different things, right? You get these, I think 27 buttons and you can, you have a lot of leeway with what those buttons can do. Is that yeah, correct? You can actually do, you can actually do um, significantly more buttons than that. Oh, okay. Uh, depending on how you want it to function. Mm-hmm. And those can be stacked, so you can have a, a single button that has five buttons underneath it, and you just press them in sequence, and they go through an entire menu. And it's it's really cool. You can have them that that adjust sliders. So if you have like a drawing program that has a brush size slider or an opacity slider, you can you can put your thumb over here and drag it, and it will um, move the mouse pointer directly over that location, which is a new feature and something I think is really cool. Yeah. So that's neat. Like it's not just a button that you can click. Like if there's something that has a slider, you can actually program tablet pro one of your, instead of a button, it would be a slider right yeah. there on your screen for you. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. So here you can see like I have backspace selected mm -hmm. here. We have a list of different buttons that you can select from. Um, and then some specific ones you can call up the keyboard um, like this. Oh, and what button did you, um, Press. Oh, okay. So if you if you're in there drawing and suddenly you want the keyboard, you just have that little button right there on your left on your screen that you can either click with your stylus or your you know I'm I'm thinking like my left thumb might click that and boom your mm -hmm. keyboard's up. Right, and that's something that's kind of tricky to bring up. You have to tap in text fields and double tap and and it's just kind of a pain. This is a nice fast way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so it's 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 nice and it's very powerful. You can add things like Control Shift Alt Win toggles, um, one second toggles. So there's oh, a so lot. That's cool. So you can do the con that was neat. You said you can do the Control Shift Alt and Win buttons too. Like so, you, you know, we, you had shown that tip where you hold down the Alt button to drag something, so you could do that without ever leaving your um, touch screen if you program right. that. Yeah, wow. well, with keyboards is like you have to have a place to put a keyboard. And with mouses, you have to have a place. And the whole point of a tablet is it's like a, it's like a sketch pad. It's like a book. Mm -hmm. Like if you wanted to read a book and every time you wanted to read a book, you need a desk. That changes a lot of things. Mm -hmm. that, that complicates a lot of things that just don't have to be that complicated. And tablet computers are like that. There's a difference between a two-in-one and a detachable. And it's, it's, in my world, it's pretty significant. I want to be in a place where we can explore where we create, like sit in a park or at the beach or, you know, anywhere and be able to have our full set of tools available and not feel like, again, like you're trudging through mud to accomplish something that's otherwise fairly easy. Yeah. Like that's actually, um, really like now that I understand it a little more, I, I really see the utility of that. Like this idea that you're not trudging through mud, it's much more seamless. Like I could just see like you're, mm -hmm. if you're sitting there someplace and you've got your tablet on your lap or on, you know, a bench or something in front of you. And it's, it, it could be so much easier just to have your left hand over there working the buttons while your right hand just continually writes. And like mm -hmm. you said, your brain doesn't need to be focused on, Oh, now I got to go up top and click this and do that. It's like, more seamless, like you can just keep going. And that yep. was one of the things I, I was thinking about in the beginning, which is that, you know, work's been, the nature of work has been changing over the last decades. And then the, with this pandemic, it's like a lot of people are working in their home when they had never planned to. So to be able to have a really portable setup that you could take into like, say a small bedroom or any place where you can close a door is yep. really amazing. One, one of the coolest, most meaningful messages I ever got from a, a Tablet Pro user was uh, a guy who at Christmas time said, you know, he was able to sit on the couch while his kids 
watch the show and sit with his family while working and editing photos. And like that to me was the coolest, most meaningful chokes me up type of thing is because that's, that's part of the reason I, I created this is I was in weird, tricky situations and, and didn't know how to be in that space without missing out on everything. And there was all this, this dichotomy between family life and work life. And, and it just doesn't have to be separated the same way that we've been told and taught and, ex and trained, you know, to believe it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, my, my husband and I are kind of in this same situation. We have a, a, a small house that we bought when both of us worked outside the home. And now we both work at home. Um, and it's been tricky to fit two modern workspaces, full desktop setups in this old small house that was never designed for that. So yeah, like, I, you know, that would, that would be amazing to be able to, you know, just work from a tablet. That's incredible. And we yeah. have a couple of really cool comments. Um, Baroth says, well, before we get to, um, before we get to Baroth's questions, um, Tracy Smith, our ed tech person was saying, uh, she was just thinking the same thing that this meaning tablet pro fits how we work now. Uh, she's at home working three days yeah. a week and in the office two days a week. And so, you know, imagine, and she probably, you know, has to maybe be at schools and stuff. So mm -hmm. someone like that, if you can work with just a Surface Pro and have all this like seamless stuff going on, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so, all right, let's get back to Baroth's question. Um, can you suggest a few colors for the highlighter from the draw tab? Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, I, what I use dark mode because I think it's less obtrusive and mm -hmm. I'm not using the screen brightness as much. I, I tend to overvalue or estimate the, the benefits of running in dark mode versus I think like my, I'm going to have an extra hour of battery life running in dark mode versus light mode. I don't think it actually works like mm -hmm. that, like very nominal improvement in battery life, but I just prefer it better. It's kind of cool and dark and mysterious. And um, so that said, the highlighter colors are totally different in dark mode. So if you have something like I use like this yellow one and it looks terrible. And same thing with the orange one, it looks terrible in dark mode. So I'm using the highlighter. I'm basically just highlighting a bright colored text something that I've already done, like, uh, let's go up here to my text here. If I choose orange here, it's basically turning it into orange font. Oh. So, okay. like, pick a green one. I'm basically changing it, because you don't get to really see the, the benefits of the, uh, the highlighter there. Yeah. When I'm on a light background, which is done by going to view and switch backgrounds. Oh, wow. So different. Uh, yeah, it's very different. The highlighter colors make a, a big difference. You can use basically whatever you want. I, I usually like um, orange, yellow, and red, and maybe a blue is what I typically use. And I'll, I'll weigh in, you know, um, they have, OneNote has some like super bright, like fluorescent highlighters, and I don't like those. I feel like they're too obtrusive. So I usually use the softer toned ones. Yeah, yeah. So that is how it looks like here. Um, again, I, I use mostly the yellow and mm -hmm. the orange. Yeah. And then um, Baroth also says, uh, will the simultaneous pen and touch work with the Surface Pro 7? Yes, it does. But that's independent of the um, hardware. So I mean, there's there are older machines that don't support simultaneous pen and touch at all just because they're old. Okay, um, gotcha. Most of the simultaneous pen and touch, what that means is that you're using the button at the same time that you're drawing or using the pen. Mm -hmm. So it's not making you do one and then the other. Uh, that's more program specific. So OneNote allows you to do uh, do this lovely. Uh, I did that the wrong way. Let's go here, back to draw, do a quick demo. So this is the ruler. I can move the ruler. And then uh, let's make sure I have a pencil selected. And I'm using touch and the pen at the same time. And that is a feature that is program specific. And so meaning one note does it, but one another note. program may not. Correct. Okay, Correct. gotcha. Yeah. 
All right. Um, it's a good technical question. I like that one. Yeah. And then so Tracy Smith, our ed tech person, says uh, that she's not working at schools right now, but whenever the pandemic is over and they're no longer virtual only, she'll, uh, she will be moving about more. So uh, a flexible workspace is vital to her. So very cool, Tracy. Uh, that's, yeah. uh, that's, uh, I look forward to hearing more of how you navigate that, you know, once you're moving around a lot. Um, okay. So we got to that. Joe uh, Pete wants to know, um, can I have more than two click locations in the pen tool? I would like two pen colors and one highlighter. Um, so again, with a two button pen, then you can have four. Oh, okay. Which so one a, would be like a single click and one would be a double click. Is that, cause is that how you get four? Well, uh, so each each one there's a toggle. Oh, so, okay. Um, so I can press the side button on the pen, and it will click two different locations, just one, and then it'll click the next one. Um, we may add that in the future, the ability to do a third location, but that's not um, something that we're looking at doing just yet. Uh, but it is possible. Yes. Gotcha. Okay, and then um, Halaf Wow says uh, for highlighters that they like to use uh, yellow, green, and blue on a white background. And yeah, you know, I, I would agree with all of those. Um, but again, I just like the softer colors. I don't like those neon colors. I feel like they're too hard on the eyes. Mm. Um, okay, so, you know, I just, I wanted to uh, mention one thing when I was getting ready for our uh, program, I was watching some YouTube videos of users of Tablet Pro, and the one that I thought was really cool, I think I mentioned it to you, he was a digital artist working on a, uh, I think, I think his machine was um, the 11 inch diagonal screen. Okay. Uh, a surface machine. And he was using Photoshop and he was showing that in Photoshop, you have all these buttons and that on a screen that small, the buttons are so small, like you have to be really precise with the tip of your stylus to hit the button. Mm -hmm. And that he really liked that with Tablet Pro, he could have um, the buttons that he used the most. And I think he had a 27 button set up. Um, so all tw the 27 buttons he used the most were these big, easy to hit things and that yeah. it saved so much time. And I could really see that just watching him work that if you're, especially if you're using procreate and you're trying to create art um, or mm -hmm. I think it was it Photoshop or no, it was, must've been uh, Photoshop. Cause I think procreate right. is iPad. Yeah. So he's using Photoshop and um, I can imagine if you're trying to create and then every time you want to do something, you have to like really precisely put the very tip of your stylus on a tiny little button that that would really interrupt you. But for the 27 things you do the most, you can have them right on your screen and seamlessly work like that, that, that really, you know, sunk in for me. Yeah. That's, that's the reason why we're so popular with artists and, and part of the, again, like the main reasons that we, we created it is like, there is, there's just this massive UI and you have all these elements on there that closing and opening and closing and opening are just, it's, you're using up a lot of real estate, the things, the buttons are hard to click. Um, hey, who's that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that lady famous. All right, let's see. I'm going to change this and show that in Photoshop. So what I like, I like in Photoshop is that um, you can use the entire UI, the entire um, window. And UI means what? So I mean, I'm sorry, I'm saying the wrong thing. You can open up the entire screen to mm -hmm. Canvas and then just have um, the tools that you need pop up. Uh, I'll demonstrate this here. All right, so um, here I like going to full screen mode. My computer is starting to lag. Okay, so I am just canvas on everything except for the, the, um, the artist pad. So you're in Photoshop right now in this blue, <laughs> image with a hand on it is in Photoshop and you've made the whole screen yeah, your yeah. canvas, except yeah, for the buttons it. we're seeing on the left. Yeah, let's go ahead and blow it up a little bit more. It's a little gotcha. confusing. Okay, here. okay so right. I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut and pick a color. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna choose the lasso tool and make a selection and then I'll deselect. And like you can open up like layers panel, or uh, the brushes or a color palette. 
Um, these different things, I may not have it set up actually correctly right now, but mm -hmm. you can open up different palettes and just have the ones that you need to use. I need to pick a color, so I'm gonna pick it up here. Um, and, and that allows me to do a lot of things much, much faster and have the entire screen available. And for me, that's really important. I wanna have the entire screen available when I work. And can you um, show us what it would look like if you had to pull up um, the Photoshop without the uh, artist pad there? Yeah. Just so that we could see like how much screen space you would lose. Right, so that that is not even, let's go workspace. Um, so this is what it normally oh. looks like this Ugh. actually. Yeah, so you have this and then people will usually switch, um, put in a color palette and then they might down at the bottom half have a brush things. So you're using roughly, and obviously you would not have the artist pad open, right? So you right. still have this amount of space, but you're using all of this space here for things that you don't necessarily have to have open all the time. Just use the hand you're not using to open up a, um, a pop-up window or whatever it is. Um, in order to get to where you want to go. So anyway, I like I like the full canvas experience. I think it's it's pretty cool for artists. And again, that's why we're really popular with artists. Yeah, when you opened that thing that came up on the right, I was like, oh, that's like really, it's like really complicated looking and it's really small and it looks really like technical. Whereas what looking at the artist pad on my left, it just looks um you know, very clean and easy to use. And like, I can see if it's like the yellow pencil is a yellow pencil, you know, it's a yellow drawing tool. It was like really obvious to me. Whereas the other one, especially being so small, it was like really, it looked like I'd have to like stop and think, okay, where is that thing? So yeah, that's really neat looking. Yeah. Um, so uh, Kurt, our uh, OneNote masterclass and educational guru wants to know what presets of Tablet Pro do you use Justice in OneNote? So I use, uh, so I, I have a, a, a bunch of OneNote presets. Um, the one I'm using right now is specific to the size of the Surface Pro 7, 6, 5, 4, I think. A 4 might be a different resolution, but mm -hmm. I put the resolution next to it. So like uh, Photoshop or preset Photoshop um, 1920 by 1280 is the resolution of the Surface Go, which means that it's going to click those buttons on the screen that don't have keyboard shortcuts uh, in the right places, essentially. But knowing oh, how to do that on your own is okay. important. So just so we understand that when you are uh, setting up um, Tablet Pro, you do need to let Tablet Pro uh, know what size screen you're working on. Well, the preset will be set up for one size screen. I, I can okay. make the one that I have right here available, but there's one that, that comes default mm -hmm. with Tablet Pro. So you just go to the installer, um, tabletpro.com slash hashtag install. Okay. And um, it has all the instructions and the download links right there. And inside there, you can just, um, you, you would open it up, which is this little mouse icon once it's installed. You right click it, not left click right click, choose layout, load preset, and then it'll give you the option to um, to pick from the list of presets that are installed in Tablet Pro. Oh, okay, so you have a preset for OneNote. Yeah, I have a oh. preset for OneNote, and you can just select that one, uh, hit open, and then you would want to make sure you select artist pad. So right click again, choose artist pad, and it should open up something that looks similar, not the same as this one, but similar. Uh, as I'm developing a new one at the moment that oh, will come okay. out later. So if that's cool. Can, so if someone yeah. if someone um, downloads Tablet Pro, they can pull they can install the OneNote preset that you've done. That's going to mm -hmm. get them you know close to what they would want for OneNote, as opposed to what they'd want for Photoshop or something like that. Yeah. And then um, they can just customize it as they want to. Yes. Oh, yeah. Right. That is really cool. What a great shortcut. So Kurt, I hope that answers your question. Um, takes takes about a minute or two to get it installed and get to this section where you can start using it. Wow. It may click different spots. You're gonna wanna make this top bar look like my top bar, mm -hmm. which you just add a pencil and then you can change the color of the pencils of these ones um, just by selecting it and then choosing it. Mm -hmm. And that's the fastest way. 
Um, okay, so that's really cool. So Joe Pete says, thanks, Michelle and Justice. I enjoyed that. Um, Halif Wow says, I love to use the stylus and keyboard when note taking. Let me give you a second option of font and size that matches the rule lines. Oh, this is cool. So Halif Wow is taking engineering classes and likes the small grid lines with Times New Roman 11. So you know oh. how you were talking about Yahe and college ruled? Yeah. That's another option. So I love that. That's really cool. Thank you, Halif Wow. Um, okay. So I don't know if this is a, uh, this is probably a tablet pro question from Harry. Uh, how can I adjust the template scene size to my screen size? Does that make sense to you? I don't know what that means. Template screen size. Template scene size to my screen size. Um, okay. So like if you have a larger screen than the Surface Pro 7, is that the question? Um, you know, I, it, that's all it says. It says how, so maybe Harry, if you could give us a little bit more details, maybe justice can answer your question. And Kurt Soser says this in all caps is so amazing. And it captivates me more and more as a diehard stylus user since 12 years. And this is really opening up new worlds. So that is awesome, Kurt. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, that okay, is so, really That's cool. Uh, Harry says yes. So I'm assuming whatever you just said, like Surface Pro or okay. Surface 7. So the way that you would do that, so if you have a larger screen or smaller screen than mm -hmm. the one that I have right here, you would uh, click on the hamburger menu. Hold on one second. Um, so Harry says his screen size is 3,000 by 4,000. Um, is that the Surface Studio? Uh, Harry, is that the Surface Studio? It doesn't really matter. Okay. Or not just was trying to place that screen size. Okay. All yeah, right, that so, sounds big. Yeah, that is this big. All right. So the yes, hamburger. It you know, is the Surface Studio. So okay. when you say hamburger, what is it? That's that three lines. It looks like a bun. Oh, of, okay. Uh, this is, it is the actual name of that okay. menu. <laughs> so you would, you would choose uh, layout, edit layout, and I'm going to drag this down and we're going to make this um, the minimized version. If this right here is little, I like to hit big preview. And uh, so we'll select the button. So say we want this one to click a location. I, um, I use a trackpad for this section because it's a lot simpler. We may implement something. Oh, actually on this one, I, I did this the other day to make it simpler. So I'm using the trackpad you can use it on your keyboard or mouse or whatever. So I'm moving the, the mouse pointer. As you can see, it's going over these colored pencils. And then I have this little circle with the X right here is pressing Alt X. So I just captured the location. And then I'm going to go down here and click in here. And then I'm going to paste. So I would paste that information in there. And I can go through my UI, whatever buttons are not clicking the right locations move the mouse pointer over it, hit Alt-X. You have to have the pen tool installed. You can use the free trial if you need to, it's fine. Um, and then go down here and paste that uh, those coordinates. I hope that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, Harry, tell me if that answered your question because I, I, I didn't quite follow it myself, so I'm not, I want to make sure that answered your question since we have justice here and there, we can... Yeah, there's no easy scaling like... A, an algorithm that that extends uh, that data or extrapolates it. Oh, okay, I see. Like if someone had it preset for a small screen, they want to just maybe the question. Like someone would say, "Oh, could I just? I'm using a bigger one now. Could I use the same settings?" But you have to actually remap it because the location on the screen is different. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. And actually, okay. one important note um, here inside of settings mm -hmm. options, I have. Um, legacy navigation panes turned on. Mm -hmm. which these buttons right here are slightly more to the left on mine than on yours, which may be to the right because there's those little, there's that little bar here when the new UI or navigation is, is present. So those little things do matter. You may have to adjust things over. You can just guess too. And, um, just right here, 600 by 182. The 182 is down from the top and the 606 is from the left corner. So top left is zero, zero. 
bottom right is the full uh, resolution of your screen, 2736 by 1824. Gotcha. Okay. So Harry said that didn't. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, that means if you wanted to move the button to the right, you could go 706 and it would move it 100 pixels over to the right and click there. All right, go ahead, Harry. Oh, yeah. So he said it answered his question. So that's cool. And then Tracy Smith uh, said um, she she likened it to switching between a Surface Pro and a Surface Go where your screen size is going to change. So mm -hmm. Exactly. And she uses both. So, yeah, I guess you would have to, um, because the locations are different, you'd have to yeah. reprogram I, I it. Okay. And um, putting that information in your preset name. So preset one note, oh. 1824 or 1900 by 1280. So you just differentiate right? uh -huh. personal preference. And anything that you guys make, uh, like um, if you can send me a setting for the Surface Studio, I'll share it with people. I'll, I'll clean it and share it so that people have access so they don't have to do quite as much work each time. And I think that's a nice way for uh, all of us to contribute. Yeah, that's really cool. And um, so once a person loads these presets, do they just get one and then that's what they have? Or could like somebody like Tracy say like, oh, well, right now I want to work as an educator. So I want these presets, but later I want to work on my personal hobby. So I want different presets. Um, yes, you have as many as you want. There's oh. no limit. And um, we have it set up. I have the pen tool set up so that it can automatically switch between programs for you. So here, this is loading uh, Photoshop's, although it's the wrong Photoshop. Uh, because we're working on the pen tool right now, I have things right. not the right way. But it'll switch between what you want, and you can switch between modes of Tablet Pro, uh, like full screen mode, which would turn your entire screen into a trackpad. You can see my finger on the right oh. side and I'm moving around and I can do custom gestures and different things um, like two finger tap for right click or undo or open the keyboard or something like that. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a college student, like we had someone saying they take engineering classes, I could have one set of pre-classes for my engineering work, but then if I'm taking an art class, I can have a, I can load different presets for my art classes. Correct. Oh, yeah. see, that's, that's cool. really cool. As Kurt said, this is like kind of, woo. you should have told me to put a helmet on because you're blowing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have to clean the helmet out. Yeah. Um, so that is that is really cool. Um, the comments, I, I think we've gotten to all of the comments and questions and uh, we've been on an hour and a half. So I am about ready to wrap it up. Um, if you do have any final questions or comments, and, uh, go ahead and type those. And Justice, if there's any like last bits you wanna show us, um, the links for um, Justice's website, for how to get the, the stylus he uses, all that stuff is linked in the description. And if there's anything I've forgotten in the description, I can add it later. So yeah. Um, anything, any final uh, thing you want to show us? Um, no, I think that's, that's it. I, I had a lot of fun. This was great. Yeah, it was. I, <clears throat> you know, we've been on an hour and a half and we still have 20, 20 people with us. So that's amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah. That yeah. Was um, so thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And thank you for staying with us. This was really fun. And um, Justice, you gave some amazing tips. And I'm so glad I got to see the app and kind of, um, you know, really get a firsthand look at it because it's actually much more amazing than I really, um, you know, knew that it was. So that was really cool yeah. to be able to kind of ask questions and stuff. Nicola says, thanks guys. Really useful. Have a great day. It's 9 30 PM here in the UK. So I'm almost done for the day. Well, thank you for spending some of your evening with us, Nicola. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So let me just, there we go. Uh, Tracy Smith. Thank you so much. Learned a lot and can't wait to check out the app. Well, thank you, Tracy. Love your contributions as always. Uh, all right. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and end it then. Um, so Justice, thank you so much for all of the great information, for spending an hour and a half with me and for all the prep work you did. It was amazing and you did a great job. And thank you for everyone for your comments and your participation. It was really fun to have you. So uh, 
you know where to find us. Thanks a lot and have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.